What are you doing home? You could be flirting your icy little heart out with one of your favorite masseurs. Oh, I am so sorry to disappoint you, darling. But my plans changed. Don't tell me. The spa sent you home, suggesting you'd get more out of a night of hot, passionate sex with your husband than a seaweed wrap. <laughs> Hardly. Though if they had, I would have told them which one I found more tempting, and it wouldn't have been you. Shall I unpack your bag, Mrs. Crane? Oh, thank you, Muriel. I'll dry your things before I put them away. I notice they're a bit damp. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Leave the bag. Muriel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> bit damp. Ooh, 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 ooh. What happened? What were you really up to last night, darling? Do tell how you managed to dampen your overnight bag when it hasn't rained for days. Where did you really go last night, Ivy? <laughs> well, I was headed towards the spa. But along the way, you decided to take a dip in the ocean with your favorite travel tote. <laughs> Very funny. No, it was too foggy. So I decided to come home. I left my overnight bag on the front step. And I uh, forgot about it. The gardeners turned on the sprinklers this morning before I could remember it. <laughs> well, you weren't the only person whose plans were thwarted last night due to fog. Sam Bennett had to abort his sailing junket with the little woman. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, I went down to the docks to speak to him about a judicial system that has Luis guarding Sheridan around the clock. What on earth are you talking about? The feds deputized Pilar's son to protect Sheridan. Oh, dear. And after you and Alistair went to all that trouble to keep them apart. <laughs> oh, so I found Grace Bennett in a total tizzy because her poor Samikins was out in the fog all by himself. Seems the fool had taken the boat out on a trial run without her. Lord knows. If I were married to Grace, I'd have left her behind on purpose. Oh, good morning. Good morning, darling. Good morning. I thought you went to your spa. Oh, plans changed. The weather wasn't agreeable. <laughs> Besides, there's so much to do on the wedding. Not that Teresa isn't doing a wonderful job. Oh, she's amazing. I can't get over everything she's done. Yes, I understand. She's become quite indispensable. Still, I'm sure Gwen would like to oversee the guest list and the invitations herself. Oh, uh, well, she won't be able to. Um, she's still in New York trying to close that deal. <laughs> but surely she's the bride-to-be. She wants to be involved in some of the wedding plans. Well, I'm going to try her father again, see if he can change her mind. But, I mean, I talked to her last night and I didn't have any luck. What? You mean you told her you wanted her to come home? <laughs> <laughs> I practically begged her. But she's so committed to her work. It's one of the things I love about her. But why would you... Ask her to abandon her work and come home, and you just said that Teresa was doing a remarkable job. The wedding plans. I've seen firsthand how well you two work together. What's the real reason you begged Gwen to come home, son? I want Gwen back in harmony because I miss her. That's a foreign concept to your father, dear. Don't waste your energy trying to explain it to him. That's all right. You two keep on talking about soulmates and the like. I'll be in the library if anyone needs me. Well, that's highly unlikely. We both know the real reason you want Gwen to come home to my boy. Julian, sometimes I wonder if you're really my son. You should have prevented Louis' assignment as Sheridan's bodyguard. I didn't know it had happened, Father, until after the fact. Besides, the FBI insisted. The Federal Bureau of Idiots. It's a sad day in America when the Cranes can't subvert government policy. Even Sam Bennett was no help. I'm afraid, Father, that we're stuck with the fact that Luis is going to be Sheridan's bodyguard, at least for the moment. I don't have to remind you how much that displeases me. 
Everything this family has worked for is on the line. I'm warning you, Julian. If Louis starts digging into his father's disappearance again, we'll have no alternative. Alternative? He must be stopped, even if it means killing him. Pull! I understand, Father. I trust you'll stay on top of the Lopez Fitzgerald situation? Of course, Father. Fine. I'll be in touch, then. Uh, wait, Father. I, I need to ask you something. Make it snappy. I'm a busy man, Julian. Since you seem so good at keeping tabs on what goes on in this house, even in your absence, perhaps you could tell me where my wife was last night. Why do you care where Ivy was? You never loved her. She hasn't been in your bed for years. That's not the point, Father. Well, then what is your male pride? Get over it, Julian. Focus on what's important, the threat Luis poses to our family. Still, I'm certain she's up to something. She's been acting very strangely. Fine, I'll give her activities a closer look. For Ivy's sake, I hope you're wrong. But with Sheridan and Luis cohabitating at her cottage, I'm in no mood for any other problems. Oh, Father, um, I'll be working at home today, so if Teresa comes in, I won't be needing her. Oh, I thought she was such an invaluable assistant. She is. I just don't want to be disturbed. Oh, interesting. First you're desperate to get Gwen home, and now suddenly you don't feel like being around Teresa anymore. What are you afraid of, son? I'm not afraid of anything. But your passions will get the better of your uptight, groomed-to-be morality, and you'll end up ravishing the ravishing daughter of a housekeeper. For the last time, Father, I am not like you. Well, you can say what you will to the cows come home, but it won't make a difference. You're a crane to the core. And sometimes I wonder how that's possible. Yes? Teresa. Mr. Crane, I am so sorry to bother you, but um, I was looking for some papers that I've been working on for Mrs. Crane's party, and uh, I thought they might be here. I haven't seen them, but you, you're welcome to look. Thank you, Mr. Crane. They're not here. Mr. Crane, I thought that Ethan might be here this morning. Ah, uh, he's up in his bedroom. In fact, he told me to tell you he'd be waiting for you to join him. Thank you, Mr. Crane. I'll go up right now. <laughs> yes, you go up right now to Ethan's bedroom. We'll see if my son can resist you this time. <laughs> he thinks he's nothing like his father. <laughs> <laughs>